Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Violet Prynne, and if you feel so inclined, make sure to follow me at Violet Prynne um, on Instagram, where you can see full updates on all of the books that I am reading pretty much in real time, and don't always have to wait for my monthly wrap-ups to see what I've been diving into. I do reviews for every single book that I read on Instagram, even though I don't do full in-depth single video reviews for every book that I read on YouTube. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited because today, I think I'm filming what is my favorite video of the year. I know last year for 2021, this was hands down my favorite video to film. It was also the second video I ever filmed, but I'm very, very excited. I also think, because this is like our beginning of the year, so we're doing like our yearly wrap ups and our most anticipated, I think I'm also going to be doing a video very shortly on what my reading goals for 2022 are, because I do have some interesting ones that are a little bit different than what my reading goals were last year. So very excited to share this with you. So I don't, I know this video is probably going to be a little lengthy because I got a lot of books that I want to talk about. So I'm just going to dive right in to the most anticipated books of 2022. As always, I read primarily horror and thriller. So every book on this list will be falling into those categories. And they are in no particular order. Though I will let you guys know which one is my most anticipated book of 2022 because there is one when I get to it. So all of the descriptions for these books I have taken from Goodreads, the same with their release dates. Um, I was looking on Amazon too and a lot of them seem to line up so I believe these are the correct release dates as of now. I know that release dates change throughout the year so I'm sorry if I get them wrong but this is just what I have available as of today. So. The first book that I'm super, super excited for is um, the sequel to my top book of 2020, uh, Clown in a Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives by Adam Cesare. This book will be released on August 23rd, 2022, and it's technically considered a YA book, which is not my thing, but I didn't think that Clown in a Cornfield 1 read like YA at all. It just kind of read like an awesome B-movie slasher film, which is what I'm really hoping um, Clown in a Cornfield 2 is going to be like. I know I always say that I hate series and I don't really care about reading sequels. Um, there's actually a lot of sequels on this list, oddly, but this is the sequel I'm most excited about just because I feel like in the traditional B-movie slasher tradition, you have to have a cheesy sequel. So I'm very happy that this is getting one. Oh, and if any of these sequel books that I read about, um, there might be spoilers for what happened in the original one. So I just want to let you guys know, I haven't really read through these synopses yet, so I'm sorry if there are spoilers. But here we go. After barely making it out of the Kettle Springs cornfields alive, Quinn's first year of college back in Philadelphia should be safe and comparatively easy. All Quinn wants is to forget what happened and be normal again. But instead, Quinn finds that her past won't leave her alone when she becomes the focus of a host of online conspiracy theories that claim to prove that the Kettle Springs Massacre never happened. It's a deranged but relentless fantasy, and there's nothing Quinn can do to get people to hear the truth, not even on her own campus or in her own dorm room. But when a murderous clown attacks Quinn at a frat party while another goes after her father in Kettle Springs at the same time, Quinn realizes that the facts alone are never going to save her. Her only option is to go back home, back into the cornfields, back to where the nightmare began, to set the record straight the only way she knows how. Because when the truth gets lost in the lies, that's when real people start to die. It's an all new horror classic about what happens when the truth is the last thing we want to believe. The sequel to the 2020 Bram Stoker Award winner. Oh my god, I'm so excited. This synopsis, I don't know why, is giving me like Happy Death Day vibes, which I really, really loved that film. So, so, so excited for that. All right, next up, um, and I heard about this back in 2020, and I've been excited for it ever since, uh, but The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. You guys know how much I love A Head Full of Ghosts. I really love Paul Tremblay's writing, and this book will come out July 5th, 2022. So we have the synopsis right here. A cleverly voiced psychological thriller about an unforgettable and unsettling friendship with blood chilling twists, crackling wit, and a thrumming pulse in its veins. From the nationally best selling author of The Cabin at the End of the World and Survivor Song. What if the coolest girl you've ever met decided to be your friend? Art Barbara was not cool. He was a 17 year old high school loner in the late 1980s who listened to hair metal, had to wear a monstrous back brace at night for his scoliosis, and started an extracurricular club for volunteer pallbearers at poorly attended funerals. 
but his new friend thought the Paul Bears Club was cool, and she brought along her Polaroid camera to take pictures of the corpses. Okay, that part was a little weird. So was her obsessive knowledge of a notorious bit of New England folklore that involved digging up the dead. And there were strange things, terrifying things, that happened when she was around, usually at night. But she was his friend, so it was okay, right? Decades later, Art tries to make sense of it by writing The Paul Bearers Club, a memoir. But somehow this friend got her hands on the manuscript, and well, she has some issues with it. Now she's making cuts. Seamlessly blurring the lines between fiction and memory, the supernatural and the mundane, The Paul Bearers Club, an immersive, suspenseful portrait of an unforgettable and unsettling friendship. Oh my god, I hope it's vampires. I know that there was so much like New England hysteria about vampires. I hope it's vampires. I could be totally wrong. I hope it's vampires. This sounds so good. Um, this, this sounds like weird and wacky, but also like gut-wrenching and very dark, like a lot of Paul Tremblay's work is. So again, very excited for that. And when I say wacky, I don't mean wacky in like the Grady Hendrix tone. I mean like just bizarre. His concepts are very bizarre sometimes, but yes, very, very excited for that. All right, next up is The Fervor by Al Makatsu, which will be released on April 26, 2022. Um, I have read uh, The Deep and The Hunger by Al Makatsu, was not a fan of The Hunger, but loved The Deep, which I believe was her 2020 release. Let's hear what this one is about. From the acclaimed and award-winning author of The Hunger and The Deep, there you go, comes a new psychological and supernatural twist on the horrors of the Japanese-American internment camps in World War II. 1944. As World War II rages on, the threat has come to the home front. In a remote corner of Idaho, Maiko Briggs and her daughter Aiko are desperate to return home. Following Maiko's husband's enlistment as an Air Force pilot in the Pacific months prior, Maiko and Aiko, I'm very sorry if I say that wrong, it could also be Mako and Aiko, um, were taken from their home in Seattle and sent to one of the internment camps in the Midwest. It didn't matter that Aiko was, was American-born. They were Japanese, and therefore considered a threat by the American government. Mother and daughter attempt to hold onto the elements of their old life in the camp when a mysterious disease begins to spread among those interned. What starts as a minor cold quickly becomes spontaneous fits of violence and aggression, even death. And when a disconcerting team of doctors arrive, nearly more threatening than the illness itself, Maiko and her daughter team up with a newspaper reporter and widowed missionary to investigate, and it becomes clear to them that something more sinister is afoot. A demon from the stories of Maiko's childhood, hellbent on infiltrating their already strange world. Inspired by the Japanese yokai and the Jorogumo spider demon, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, uh, the fervor explores a supernatural threat beyond what anyone saw coming. The danger of demonization, a mysterious contagion, and the search to stop its spread before it's too late. I love that Almakatsu likes to blend historical fiction with supernatural horror. That is what the deep is for the Titanic and the hunger for the Donner Party. This will be really cool to see with uh, the Japanese camps in the 40s. Um, the fact that it's going to be this weird kind of spider demon is going to scare the crap out of me because spiders in stories and in fiction and in real life really creep me out. <laughs> uh, next up, this is my most anticipated read of 2022 because I thought it was coming out in 2021 and then it got pushed back and I was very upset. But that is Echo by Thomas Oyld Hoyvelt. Um, I hope I say his name right. I think I say it wrong every time. But he is the author of the book Hex, which was also on my top 10 books of 2020 list. Um, so this is Echo. Again, coming out February 8th, 2022. So very, very soon. Um, and here is the description. Nature is calling, but they shouldn't have answered. Travel journalist and mountaineer Nick Grevers awakes from a coma to find that his climbing buddy Augustine is missing and presumed dead. Nick's own injuries are as extensive as they are horrifying. His face wrapped in bandages and unable to speak. Nick claims amnesia, but he remembers everything. He remembers how he and Augustine were mysteriously drawn to the Maudit. Maudit? I hope so. Um, a remote and scarcely documented peak in the Swiss Alps. He remembers how the slopes of Maudit were eerily quiet, and how when they entered its valley, they got the ominous sense that they were not alone. He remembers something was waiting for them, but it isn't just the memory of the accident that haunts Nick. Something has awakened inside of him, something that endangers the lives of everyone around him. It's one thing to lose your life, it's another to lose your soul. From the international best-selling sensation Thomas Oyld Helvold, Hoyvelt, whatever it is, comes a thrilling descent into madness and obsession as one man confronts nature and something even more ancient and evil answers back. Ugh, oh, I can't wait to read that. I am trying to get my hands on it as soon as humanly possible. I want to read this book so badly. 
All right, next up is Mina and the Slayers. This was this is the sequel to Mina and the Undead. Um, Amy McCall, the author, reached out to me um, in the middle of last year and sent me a copy graciously of Mina and the Undead. It is a YA vampire fiction set in New Orleans in the 90s. Again, I'm not a huge YA fan, um, but I gave this one a shot and I really, really enjoyed it. This is definitely more YA than Clown in a Cornfield is, but I'm very, very excited to read this. Again, sequel's not really my thing, but a lot of books impressed me last year and the year before. So this book will release on September 1st, 2022, and there's not a lot out yet on this novel. Sequel to Mina and the Undead, it's 1995 in New Orleans, and Mina's having a killer Halloween. Um, um, yeah, Halloween in the 90s in New Orleans with vampires? Just sign me up. I'm gonna read this. I really liked the first one, so very excited for that. All right, next up we have What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher, which will be released on July 12th, 2022. Um, for those of you who do not know, T. Kingfisher wrote The Hollow Places and The Twisted Ones, which are both spins on short stories. Um, the Hollow Places being based on Algernon Blackwood's The, uh, the Willows, and The Twisted Ones being based on, what is his name? I think it's Sir Arthur Machen's The White People. I've not read that. I have read The Willows. This one is going to be um, T. Kingfisher's spin on Edgar Allan Poe, which I'm so excited about because you guys know I love Edgar Allan Poe. So, the synopsis. From the award-winning author of The Twisted Ones comes a gripping and atmospheric retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's classic, The Fall of the House of Usher. When Alex Easton, a retired soldier, receives word that their childhood friend Madeline Usher is dying, they race to the ancestral home of the Ushers in the remote countryside of Ruritania, where they find there is a nightmare of fungal growths and possessed wildlife surrounding a dark, pulsing lake. Madeline sleepwalks and speaks in strange voices at night, and her brother Roderick is consumed with the mysterious malady of the nerves. Aided by a redoubtable? Aided by a redoubtable British mycologist, and a baffled American doctor, Alex must unravel the secret of the House of Usher before it consumes them all. Ooh, that sounds good. I'm very excited for this. I really like T. Kingfisher's work. The Hollow Places blew me away. Twisted Ones, I don't think I was as invested in because I felt that it was very similar to The Hollow Places in like tone and structure, but I'm interested to see what she does with Poe, especially The Fall of the House of Usher. That's a story I really, really do love. All right. Next up, coming out on July 7th, 2022, is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I love Riley Sager, even though he does seem to just churn books out. Him and Grady Hendrix both just like pumping novels out every single year. Um, and his book, Survive the Night, was on my most anticipated list last year. And even though I didn't have one, Home Before Dark was on my unofficial list for the year before. And I loved Home Before Dark. Survive the Night was okay. So the synopsis for The House Across the Lake. The New York Times bestselling author of Final Girls and Survive the Night is back with his most unexpected thriller yet. Rolling Stone Casey Fletcher, a recently widowed actress trying to escape a streak of bad press, has retreated to the peace and quiet of her family's lake house in Vermont. Armed with a pair of binoculars and several bottles of liquor, she passes the time watching Tom and Catherine Royce, the glamorous couple who live in the house across the lake. They make for good viewing. A tech innovator, Tom is rich, and a former model, Catherine is gorgeous. One day on the lake, Casey saves Catherine from drowning, and the two strike up a budding friendship. But the more they get to know each other and the longer Casey watches, it becomes clear that Catherine and Tom's marriage is not as perfect and placid as it appears. When Catherine suddenly vanishes, Casey becomes consumed with finding out what happened to her. In the process, she uncovers eerie, darker truths that turn a tale of voyeurism and suspicion into a story of guilt, obsession, and how looks can be very deceiving. With his trademark blend of sharp characters, psychological suspense, and gasp-worthy surprises, Riley Sager's The House Across the Lake unveils more than one twist that will shock readers until the very last page. And I do love that about Riley Sager. I know a lot of people don't like that Riley Sager always has these crazy twist endings that kind of come out of nowhere. I was able to predict the one and survive the night, but all of his other ones have really blindsided me. So I know going into a Riley Sager book that that's what I'm getting. So very excited to see what he does with this kind of, again, <laughs> like cliche horror setting of a story. So excited for that. Okay, next up, on March 1st, 2022, Sundial by Catriona Ward will be coming out. Um, I really enjoyed Catriona Ward's writing style on The Last House of Needless Street, so I'm interested to see what she has to do in her upcoming novel, though it is a little strange that Needless Street and Sundial are coming out so close together. It makes me wonder like how long they were both in the editing process for. Um, 
Maybe that's just me. Oh, I'm always hesitant when books come out by the same author so, so close together. Um, and then it says, Sundial is a new twisty psychological horror novel from Katrin Award. Um, you can't escape what is in your blood. All Rob wanted was a normal life. She almost got it too. A husband, two kids, a nice house in the suburbs. But Rob fears for her oldest daughter, Callie, who collects tiny bones and whispers to imaginary friends. Rob sees a darkness in Callie, one that reminds her too much of the family she left behind. She decides to take Callie back to her childhood home, to Sundial, deep in the Mojave Desert. And there, she will have to make a terrible choice. Callie is worried about her mother. Rob has begun to look at her strangely and speaks of past secrets, and Callie fears that only one of them will leave Sundial alive. The mother and daughter embark on a dark desert journey to the past in the hopes of redeeming their future. Okay, interesting. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see a different kind of bond between kind of like paternal figure and child than the, what we had in The Last House on Needless Street because that was also kind of the same premise in a very, very different way. So definitely interested to see what she does with that. All right, next up, I have Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones, which will be out on August 2nd, 2022. This is the um, sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw, which was my second highest rated book, most beloved book of 2021. Um, and this says that it is part of the Indian Lake Trilogy. Ooh, that's cool. I didn't realize there was going to be three. Again, not a big fan of series, but I loved the character of Jade Daniels. And I do apologize if there are spoilers in this description for the original My Heart is a Chainsaw. December 12th, 2019, Jade returns to the rural lake town of Proofrock, the same day as convicted indigenous serial killer Dark Mill South escapes into town to complete his revenge killings in this riveting sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw from New York Times bestselling author Stephen Graham Jones. Four years after her tumultuous senior year, Jade Daniel is released from prison right before Christmas when her conviction is overturned. But life beyond bars takes a dangerous turn to as soon as she returns to Proofrock, convicted serial killer Dark Mill South, seeking revenge for 38 Dakota men hanged in 1862, escapes from his prison transfer due to a blizzard just outside of Proofrock, Idaho. Dark Mill's South reunion tour began on December 12, 2019, a Thursday. 36 hours and 20 bodies later, on Friday the 13th, it would be over. Don't Fear the Reaper is the page-turning sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw from New York Times bestselling author Stephen Graham Jones. Oh my god, I hadn't actually read the premise of this yet. I just heard that they had this coming. That sounds so good. I really love Jade. I'm so interested to see what route this takes. I love that they're introducing a serial killer into this. Um, the first book it was very pro-feminist and had a very strong message, but really focused on the idea of slashers potentially happening. This kind of sounds like this is guaranteed to be the slasher. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't believe I'm saying this. I really dislike everything else that Stephen Graham Jones has written, but I thought My Heart is a Chainsaw was one of the greatest books I read last year, so I'm very, very thrilled. Okay, next up is The Resting Place by Camilla Sten, which is out on March 29th, 2022. I was introduced to Camilla Sten this year when I read her novel The Lost Village. It's a very atmospheric, gothic, Nordic noir type of read, and I thought it was fantastic. So, this book is a spine-chilling, propulsive, psychological suspense from international sensation Camilla Sten. Medical term is prosopagnosia. <laughs> the average person calls it face blindness and the inability to recognize a familiar person's face, even the faces that of those that are closest to you. When Eleanor walked in on the scene of her capriciously cool grandmother Vivian's murder, she came face to face with a killer, a maddening expression that means nothing to someone like her. With each passing day, her anxiety mounts. The dark feelings of having brushed by a killer, yet not know who could do this, or if they'd be back, overtakes both her dreams and her waking moments, thwarting her perception of reality. Then a lawyer calls. Vivian has left her a house, a looming estate tucked away in a Swedish woods, the place her grandfather died suddenly, a place that has housed a dark past for over 50 years. Eleanor, her steadfast boyfriend, Sebastian, her reckless aunt, Veronica, the lawyer, all will go to this house of secrets looking for answers, but as they get closer to bringing the truth to light, they'll wish they had never come to disturb what rests there. A heart-thumping, relentless thriller that will shake you to your core. The Resting Place is an unforgettable novel of horror and suspense. I really like Camilla Sten's use of atmosphere to kind of drape this like almost contemporary gothic tone over her stories, so I really hope that this contains something similar to that. Out of all the 
like backs of books that I read going into novels this year. Uh, Camilla Sten's The Lost Village was the most accurate in description of what I was going to get out of the book, so very, very excited to see what the resting place is like. All right, next up is The Ravenous Dead by Darcy Coates, which will be out March 15th, 2022. Ooh, that's my anniversary. Um, yes, it is the eyes of March, how fitting. Anyhow, this is uh, The Gravekeeper number two. This is going to be the sequel to Darcy Coates' 2021 novel, The Whispering Dead, which I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and I really like the characters in that, so I'm excited to see them in another novel. So, synopsis. He'll never let go. Kira, hired as Blightly's graveyard, new groundskeeper, lives surrounded by the dead. They watch her through the fog. They wordlessly cry out. They've been desperately waiting for help moving on, and only Kira can hear them. But not every restless spirit wants to be saved. Sometimes the dead hate the living too much to find peace. As Kira struggles to uncover the tangled history of some of the graveyard's oldest denizens, danger seeps from the darkest edges of the forest. A vicious serial killer was interred among the trees decades before, his spirit twisted by his violent nature. He's furious, ravenous, and when Kira unwittingly answers his call, she may just seal her fate as his final intended victim. Ooh, okay, interesting. And I really hope that they answer the overarching message or mystery of who Kira is and why she is where she is, because that was not really addressed in the first book. But I like this. There's a lot of serial killers in these upcoming stories, and I'm, I'm about it. All right, next up is Black Mouth by Ronald Malfi. You know how much I love him. And this will be out on July 19th, 2022, and that is the day after my birthday. I know what I'm getting myself for my birthday. Um, and the synopsis for this. Perfect for fans of Stephen King's It. Definitely getting this for my birthday, guys. Um, a group of friends return to their hometown to confront a nightmare they first stumbled on as teenagers in this mesmerizing odyssey of terror. For nearly two decades, Jamie Warren has been running from darkness. He's haunted by a traumatic childhood and the guilt of having disappeared from his disabled brother's life. But then a series of unusual events reunites him with his estranged brother and their childhood friends, and none of them can deny the sense of fate that has seemingly drawn them back together. Nor can they deny the memories of that summer, so long ago. The strange magic taught to them by an even stranger man, and the terrible act that has followed them all into adulthood. In the light of the new danger, they must confront their past by facing their futures and hunting down a man who may very well be a monster. Coming of age, horror, and Ronald Malfi. Can I ask for anything more, guys? Like, ugh, very excited. Okay, and last but not least is How to Sell a House by Grady Hendrix, which will be released on July 12th, 2022. I need Grady Hendrix to redeem himself after Final Girl Support Group because I could not stand that book. And the further I get away from having read that book, the more I dislike it. Which is a shame because I think Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and My Best Friend's Exorcism were great. So really hoping that this book has more of that lighthearted humorous side of Grady Hendrix balanced with true horror and not whatever weird, I don't even know what the Final Girl Support Group mess was that it was. Okay. There's really not much on this book either. Um, it just says New York Times bestselling author Grady Hendrix takes on the haunted house in a hilarious and terrifying new novel that explores the way your past and your family can haunt you like nothing else. Well, I hope it is both hilarious and terrifying because <laughs> Final Girl Support Group was depressing and underwhelming. But yeah, those are my top um, most anticipated books. I do have a few like honorable mentions that I'll shout out real quick. I'm really interested in Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes, which I believe is like underwater horror. And then The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. Um, she had, what was it, The Sundown Motel or something like that that came out last year um, that people really seemed like mixed opinions on and I haven't read it yet. Um, but this one speaks more to me. Um, it's about like cold cases and solving cold cases which is something I absolutely adore. I love true crime. So definitely interested in those as well. Also really hoping that Up the Chimney Down by Joe Hill is finally released this year. It was originally going to be released in 2020, then rumored for 2021, and haven't really heard anything at all for 2022. Um, but I've heard a lot of speculation about it, and it's going to be about, I believe, one of the characters in one of his prior novels that was mentioned briefly. I don't really know, but I really, really hope that book comes out very, very soon. Would love to see more from Joe Hill. He's such a great author. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today in this long, rambling video. I am so excited for 2022. 
I cannot wait to get my hands on all of these books and I will absolutely be reviewing all of them right here on this channel. And as always, I post every Monday and Thursday and sometimes on Saturdays. If you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And let me know what books you are most excited for to read in 2022 down in the comments. And I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.